All right, welcome everyone and good morning. My name is Christian Bacasa. I am the Senior Director of Sales Operations for Job Nimbus. And today we have a, uh, a great webinar put together for you with a number of key guests from uh, a few of our integrators. Um, that's Eagle View and Leap. But um, yeah, we've had this webinar series going and it's been a great success for us. In fact, on this webinar, we have over, well over 300 people registered to attend. And uh, it's, it's obviously resonated with the group that there are some needs in this area. So we're gonna walk through a number of uh, specifics around um, your business and how we could potentially help um, regarding um, the uh, sales operations, really moving from an outside sales organization into an inside sales organization. So I think we'll have some, uh, some great tips and tricks to help facilitate that for you and um, look forward to uh, sharing that throughout this program. <clears throat> So real quick, I would like to review what we covered on our last uh, series. Uh, and that was um, around some of the very basics in, in regard to the, the quarantine and items that we're going through in this very uh, uncertain time. So quickly, uh, three things that our founder Ben covered was uh, number one, being empathetic. Um, I think it's really important to be able to relate to your customers. Everybody's in a time of need, just like you and I, and uh, being empathetic is really going to resonate with them. And empathetic uh, in this sense with regard to sales is going to be, you know, really making the process um, as easy as possible and um, facilitating them as much as you can. We then spoke to some of the items around taking up all the oxygen in the room. And uh, taking up all the oxygen in the room um, may refer to, uh, you know, really driving service, marketing, and sales, uh, among other things, to help facilitate that. Um, so let me change my mic. I'm hearing that uh, it might be a little weak. So the uh, the next item would be maintaining your marketing. Really, uh, from that perspective, a lot of people have had difficulty with. Um, you know, making the decision to facilitate their business through additional marketing or maintaining the existing marketing. And the tips that we've received from a number of business owners that have been successful in very difficult times is that whole mentality of don't lay off the gas. If you can afford to do it, if you can, if you have the resources to do it, et cetera, really try to at least maintain your marketing. That's going to help position you against your competitors uh, as best as possible. And then three other tips that came along in our last web series uh, were from Rachel. Rachel um, on the Job Nimbus team talked about some of the rudimentary items around uh, really facilitating your business. And that's some of the things that we provide for you. Um, for example, we have a number of partner advantages. Again, we'll talk about some of the partner advantages that um, we uh, cover on, uh, on this session with Eagle View and Leap. But we have tons of integrations. Um, and in addition to that, you also have a number of partners that you probably work with that can help facilitate you, your subs, et cetera. Remember, as their business grows, your business is gonna grow, et cetera. Uh, <clears throat> Next, she talked about how demand may necessarily not change. There are a lot of environmental um, aspects to our business that drive demand, storms, um, weather, et cetera. And you know, those things are gonna happen. So continue to prepare for those and lean on those and uh, that should help drive your business as well. And then last of all, one of the really important things is to adapt and overcome. I think this is um, one thing that is innate in our uh, our businesses, and that's let's think about the our teams. You know, if we have a team up on a roof and they don't have the right tool or materials, often they adapt and overcome, and we should drive our businesses in the same way. I know at Job Nimbus we're doing that as well, um, and I hope that uh, you'll be able to facilitate that too. So quickly, just in review, I want to remind everyone that today's webcast is being recorded. We will share that throughout the audience. There are two ways to interact with us. There is the chat 
session, which you can watch throughout the show. Um, there's another um, way to interact, and that is through Q&A. And please pose Q&A questions throughout the uh, webinar, and then we'll try to adjust those in the Q&A session at the end. Um, and then lastly, throughout on each topic, there are three topics we will cover today. There'll be a polling session. So you should see a polling card come up. Just take a few seconds to read the question and answer the polls. That'll provide us with some feedback to help facilitate the, uh, th not only this webinar, but um, the next um, two. Okay, so let's get started here. Um, today's panel discussion uh, is around converting outside sales teams into inside sales teams. And like I said, my name is Christian Bacassa. I'm the Senior Director of Sales Operations. I have over 25 years of uh, experience in building inside and outside sales organizations. And I've also worked as a consultant to a number of roofing and or small construction businesses. So we've got um, a fair amount of experience there. And then we've got, again, our two um, integration partners with um, Eagle View and Leap. And um, why don't we introduce those people here? Haley, can you introduce yourself? Hi, everyone. My name is Haley Vick, and I am with Eagle View. I'm currently the regional sales manager at Eagle View, and I have experience in both inside and outside sales in the construction industry. All right, great. Thanks. Thanks, Haley. And Tom, yourself. Yeah, hey, everyone. Tom Bash. Uh, I am uh, with Leap, the strategic partnership manager. Uh, likewise, been in the roofing industry for, for 15 years, started as a laborer, moved through production management into sales, and uh, been uh, selling technology in this space for the last four years. Great. All right. So let's get started. We're going to jump into our first topic. And our first topic is around providing structure with a template. Um, one of the things that we really want to do for our inside sales team is, is open the doors again for structure. Let's think about it. A lot of our reps sell day to day. They're working out of their truck or they may be in and out of the office. The reality is they typically do have a pretty well structured day. Let's not let the distraction of what's going on um, really become a distraction and get them out of that structure. So help facilitate um, them using that, whether it's a template or a very specific structure for the day. Um, I look at things like um, breaking up their day in the very specific blocks for them and helping them identify that, um, facilitating them with templates or facilitating them by providing lists and calendars and prioritization and that should get them um, really kind of rolling uh, <clears throat> so, uh, with regard to that topic, um, Tom, can you provide some insight on what um, you maybe have been hearing from the field um, or experiencing um, with regard to structures and templates? Yeah, absolutely. Appreciate that, Christian. Um, I, you know, this is obviously a really hot topic right now, and, and so we do get a lot of uh, uh, contractors reaching out and looking to, uh, you know, figure out best practices and what to do. And, and one of the big things that comes up is, is to practice. So a lot of companies have really good um, sales uh, presentations that are built. Um, they've got a, uh, a routine, if you will, or, or you know, a 10 step process, a 12 step process. And switching this from being in the home to doing this online or remotely, it's really important to practice um, each of those steps. Um, the next of this is, is digitize any stage and step that you don't already have digital. So, for a lot of companies, what we're hearing is, is this could be on the contract side. Um, this could be with pitch books, uh, presentations. You know, a lot of people have, have these binders or, you know, they're out there doing the scarecrow with the homeowner holding up two sample boards. <laughs> and uh, so it's really important that you have all that type of material digi digitized. And, and obviously this is, this is where, you know, Leap is helping a lot of their contractors or customers. I um, really like that. I, I like that a lot. Yeah. And so, you know, get good at following up, um, you know, follow your sales process really closely. You really got to fine tune that, uh, you know, when you're switching from, from uh, you know, selling remotely or selling an in, as an inside uh, rep, you really got to hone that process in and, be, and have it really fine tuned. Um, and the next thing is just, you know, again, being really good at following up because a lot of customers um, are going to have the ability now to kind of brush you off or push you off because um, you're not face to face with them, right? So get good at following up, get good at taking notes of what those next steps might be. You know, why did they not close um, so that you uh, can put together a good plan for moving, moving that lead forward? Yeah, and, and that's interesting because that follow up really 
you know, aligns with the whole service aspect, right? And aligns with that message that Ben had um, conveyed on our first webinar of taking up all the oxygen in the room. And I think for a lot of us as uh, small business owners, service is really going to be a differentiator in this, um, this uh, current timing. Uh, Tom, what about um, an example of something that, um, you know, our, our, our customers can do today um, with regard to this? Yeah, absolutely. Great question. So again, I think the most important thing that, that people can do right now is really practice that, um, you know, selling remotely, if you will. Again, a lot of people are really good at doing this in person and they may have done it a hundred or a thousand times, you know, in person with a customer and, and you get a different experience with them. So really honing in on, you know, what engages that customer remotely um, and what keeps them interested throughout that entire presentation. Because again, you're not there, um, you know, reading, if you will, that, that person's, you know, emotions and feelings. So um, practicing that and having a good cadence, uh, something that they could do today to, to really help them you know, be successful going forward. Yeah, reading emotions, I think, is going to be a big character. And there's a couple ways to, to do that, and we'll definitely cover that uh, later in the session here. So I don't want to break the surprise. <laughs> yep. <laughs> okay, let's see here. Haley, I know you've uh, put together some thoughts there, let's, uh, and I know you've heard a number of things from mm -hmm. customers. Let's, let's hear your perspective. Yeah, so I've had a lot of people kind of asking about, you know, transitioning from the outside to the inside, and I have a few suggestions. Um, the first one is definitely consistency, creating a workflow, um, you know, a template for each job, just like you were doing before. I'm sure you had some sort of workflow, um, you know, make sure that you, you still continue to keep a workflow and use tools to help you stay on track, whether that's your CRM, um, a lead management tool, or a workflow operation soft automation software where, um, you know, there's Job Nimbus, there's Leap, Eagle View can help you get your measurements and, and use tools to help create that dialogue. Use video conferencing to engage with the homeowner whenever possible. Um, we're still a largely relationship-based industry, so you do need to make sure that you're taking the steps to create that dialogue and make sure that you're still engaging the customer to build that trusting relationship that you guys have um, built per before face-to-face. The next thing is definitely have a routine. Don't fall into the trap of working from home. I know the first week was a little rough for me and it, you know, it's even more important now than ever to be engaged. So don't use this as a reason to slack off, you know, make sure you keep a to-do list and you stay focused on all of your tasks and stay on track. Um, and finally, confidence is key. Uh, you may not feel as confident not being face-to-face -face with the customer, um, or you might not feel as confident with the new tools that you're using, but um, consistency and routine can help you stay confident and feel confident. And when you're able to use those tools and um, instill confidence in yourself, you can win the job and you can exude confidence and the customer will feel confident in you as well. So as they like to say, fake it till you make it and make sure that the, co the customer feels confident in you as well. Yeah, I like that, fake it till you make it. In, in you made uh, really some great points here and, and all three points align quite well with what I would consider the element of really conveying yourself and your personality through mm -hmm. whether it's the video or phone or, you know, so many of us in this business have great personalities and that's what differentiates us. Uh, even that's even what makes as, us salespeople. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, you know, concentrate and work on not losing that even though it's on the phone and exactly um, I think I think you'll survive again I'm gonna I'm gonna ask you the same question Haley because mm -hmm. I think this is important what what is something that we can do today um, or our customers can do today that is going to help facilitate this yeah, um, you know, just the first thing that I said, create a to do list, create a workflow template, make some sort of consistency, so that when you're going through your workflow, you can feel confident and comfortable. Um, whether that's, you know, the first thing you do is log your lead, order your measurements, do your follow up, all of that, just make sure that you have some sort of workflow documented that you're following on every job. Yeah, and I think um, with a lot of these, there's um, communication amongst your team, you yeah. know, as in, in a new sales organization per se, being inside, um, really having that kind of cross pollinating experience is going to, going to help facilitate this and, and drive it forward a, a lot faster. Exactly. Yeah. Yep. Great. Great. Okay. So we're going to move on to the next subject. Um, 
let's see here, and that's um, letting technology drive success. Again, there should be a poll that pops up, um, and please fill that out. Okay, so technology, th this is our wheelhouse, right? As Job Nimbus, um, Eagle View, and Leap, this is certainly our wheelhouse and uh, something that we feel we can add, add to um, your business, but there are some very uh, rudimentary and very simple things that you can do to help facilitate your things. Things like headsets, um, for example, um, you know, helping them, you know, get the right computers in place and et cetera, et cetera. So don't forget about those very simple items and, you know, listen to your, your reps and or team and ask them, hey, what else do you need to make you feel comfortable and confident as um, Haley had targeted earlier. So those are some simple things. Now on some of the more um, uh, complex items or items that um, you know you may have existing in your day to day or maybe looking at are things like our CRM tool, our project management tools, et cetera. And then of course the integrations that we offer with uh, again, Eagle View and Leap and many other people. So don't forget about being able to use and or optimize those items um, throughout this period, you know, this is a great time for you to take advantage of those and potentially get ahead of your competition in those areas or just refine your own business and do some cost savings, etc. So um, I'm going to jump into this uh, now that we've got the polling done and um, go from from here. So we've got Eagle View up first on this one. Uh, gotcha. Haley, again, why don't you dive into some of the things that you're hearing from customers and uh, how we can help our, our customers. Going yeah, for sure. So um, I think that the biggest thing is like things that I've been hearing a lot is how do I keep customers engaged? I also see in the chat, people are asking, how do you help the customer, you know, see the physical pieces that you would normally bring with them? You were talking about the shingle boards, all of that stuff. So the number one important tool I think is video conferencing. Um, as I mentioned before, we do work in a very relationship based industry and video conferencing can help you build that relationship virtually and show the homeowner what you would have shown them in person. So number one, turn on your video. If there's one thing that I've learned in my time from inside sales, it's that not having a visual gives people so much more opportunity for distraction. So when there is a video, even if it's just them looking at you, not necessarily you being able to see them, there is just this additional level of accountability and they remained more engaged throughout the presentation. Um, they're less likely to brush you off and, and get distracted by something else going on around them. This also allows you to build that relationship and that trust with the customer. Um, you're still able, they're still able to see you, your personality is still able to shine through and going back to confidence, you can show them that you're confident, you know, you're confident in your team, in yourself, in your measurements, in your process. So they'll feel more confident in their decision to choose you. Um, the next part is measurement reports. So, you know, you're not able to go out there right now and you're not able to go up there on the roof and get the measurements, but there are tools out there, including Eagle View. Um, you know, we started the roof report industry back in 2008 and we're still the leader today. So, you know, there's an easy and efficient way to get accurate quotes for your customers and you can show them you know, you can show them the reports in your visual, just like you would your shingle board or anything like that. So giving the homeowner the confidence that you know their roof and what it's going to take to replace or repair it, even though you haven't been out there. So you can really show them that tr that proof um, and show them the high resolution images from your Eagle View report and all that. And then of course, integrations. Job Nimbus and Leap, Eagle View does integrate seamlessly with them. We all have different integration partners so that you can keep your workflow as consistent and streamlined as possible. It's super important to utilize the power of technology right now to your advantage so that you can work more efficiently than you ever have before. Yeah, those are all great, um, great points, Haley. And, you know, one of the key takeaways I would, uh, you know, walk away with there is um, differentiators, mm -hmm. so making sure you as a service provider are providing uh, differentiators. So um, that, that's, that's great input. And just Definitely. by the way here, I'm noticing that on the chat, we had some problems with our polling tool. Some of the polling is coming up now. So you may be seeing that if you have uh, a few seconds to add to that, that'd be great. We're getting some great feedback already. And I'll share that as I can. Okay, let's see here. 
<clears throat> Tom, how about you uh, with regard to uh, this topic area of letting technology drive success? Yeah, absolutely. So this is, uh, you know, obviously right within my wheelhouse as a, as a partnership manager. Um, you know, all, all, all three of us integrate with, with dozens and dozens and dozens of uh, other services and products that, that you're likely already using today. Um, and so find a technology that, that works with the tools that you're already using, right? Uh, you know, make things seamless. Um, you know, this kind of ties into my next point of eliminating entering the same data more than once. So there's this, uh, I got to share this funny story. I, uh, when I was uh, transitioning from uh, selling in a, in a storm-based environment in North Carolina to a retail-based environment in New York, uh, I, I started with this company that was 30, 40 years old and uh, had filing cabinets of, of paperwork and job files, you know, in the basement. And uh, so we, it was just so inefficient. And, and you know, as a, as a 100% commission sales rep, like I got paid to, to sell, right? Not to pull a tape measure, uh, not to uh, do all this paperwork. So as a sales rep, I just wanted to sell. And well, we found out that we were writing down the customer's name 27 times from the time that that lead came in until the time that that, that file went in the filing cabinet. And uh, it's just completely inefficient. And, uh, you know, I hope there's no one on the, on, on the webinar today that, that's still doing it like that. Um, but if you are, there's hope. <laughs> There's a lot of great technology. Obviously, you know, the way that these integrations work, you know, you, you've got your customer in, in Job Nimbus, uh, you know, that can pull right into Leap. Uh, you can order your measurements um, through Eagle View and then pull those up into Leap um, and then, you know, facilitate that sale and push it right back into Job Nimbus. And so all these, all these uh, systems all work together so that you're not having to spend time on that manual data entry aspect. And so it leads to kind of my third point there, you know, by automating that, it let the sales team sell, it lets the marketing team market and it lets production produce so uh, you know leverage the integrations leverage the technology um, uh, you know there's so much so much good technology out there um, and, it, and it all works together to make your life easier you know now it's funny right it's comical to hear that story but i can assure you that there's a number of people on this call that have had very similar experiences to the data entry and doubling up uh etc so yeah, Tom, I really appreciate sharing that story. Um, kind of, kind of funny. We we deal with that on a regular basis of hearing those pains um, and those those problems for um, a lot of our customers. Um, how about again? I'm, I think this is important. You know, the value of our webinar today is really to provide our customers with um, some insight on some things they can act on very quickly. Um, what what do you think about that? Or give another story or or a topic that you could you could share there, Tom? Yeah, well, I would just say, you know, let's, well, everybody's, you know, obviously adopting to the current environment. I think it's also important to, to take this time to kind of um, do that self-assessment and spend time you know, working on the business as opposed to in the business. And so what I mean by that is, you know, we sometimes get uh, carried away with the day-to-day -day operations. And, and now is kind of a good time, um, you know, as good a time as it can be, I guess, to really focus on the business. And so find out, you know, how these different technologies work together uh, and, and you know, you're likely using the technologies that already do speak. And so make sure that, that you know, you have those kind of integrations set up um, and that you're really taking advantage of, of, you know, the technology that's available. Yeah, it's interesting too, as you were discussing that, the poll results came up and um, a structured sales process was number one at 49%. And then at 43% of the people on this call today, they talked about automations and really the automations between our integrations, um, you know, they're, they're, um, they're paramount to success and they're some of the best in the industry. So it's, it's great to hear not only you um, discuss the, the value and what you're hearing in the field in regard to that automation value, but to hear it from our customers on this call as well. So, you know, if you'd like to learn more about that, um, there are some links available for you to schedule demos and we can review um, integrations with uh, both Eagle View and Leap uh, that we have here on the call, but there are many other integrations as well. So feel free to take advantage of that. All right, I'm gonna jump into the next subject and we should have another poll that would pop up. All right, and this subject is with regard to negotiating virtually and the misperceptions around um, uh, what is going on in effect to going to a inside sales organization. So there goes our poll, take a few seconds to answer that. And 
um, you know, I just want to kind of touch base on that real quick on what I mean by negotiating virtually. And, and it's something that's very interesting right now. Um, I think there's uh, a number of misperceptions around that in that, you know, we, we negotiate virtually all the time. Uh, you know, it's something to be said about our sales guys selling from the tailgate of their truck or from inside their truck or from the office. It's not always that we are in person. So don't lose sight of that. Uh, there are many of these things that we do on a regular basis and um, we don't really necessarily have to facilitate. Our guys know how to do it and just support them in that um, as, as a whole. And then being problem solvers, uh, as I kind of described here, and, you know, let's not forget, um, I mentioned this at the start, you know, if we have one of our guys out in the field and, you know, the right tool isn't there or the right material isn't there, they're problem solvers. They, it is innate to them. They know how to do it. Help facilitate that. I think that really helps. And the big misperceptions to me are, you know, sales, they don't have to necessarily suffer. Um, let's maintain that perspective. Um, let's focus on what we can control. And then again, communication, communication between our team and our, our customers or prospects. Um, those are all going to drive our success. And it looks like our polling results came up. And again, um, lead in customer communication is going to be uh, a key component there. And there are a number of ways we've talked about. And I think um, some of those things are going to come up in the, these next, next few subject areas. And we'll make sure to cover them uh, again. So let's move on to um, our next slide. And that's uh, selling virtually. And um, yeah. yeah, with Leap, uh, Tom, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, thanks. Um, kind of, kind of timely, right? With those, with the poll questions. Yeah, yeah, uh, that's great. Um, yeah, so, so a couple uh, tips in here, and, and and these may be things that you're already are aware of, but uh, I think it's important to emphasize, you know, when you're, and I mentioned, you know, companies having pitch books and and, and telling that company story, um, and even throughout this presentation, right? Well, when you're communicating with a customer, uh, you really want them focused on what you're saying, not so much of like reading down slides or reading about your company, right? So. Uh, I think it's, it, I, or I shouldn't say, I think, I know it's very important to, to utilize images and, and visuals and, uh, and videos to tell that story, right? It, it captivates your, your uh, customer much more than, than them, you know, trying to read a bunch of slides and, 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 you know, read between the lines and while you're talking to them, they're reading it and you don't have their full attention. Um, and then just to, to reiterate, you know, what Haley was saying, turn your video on. Like that's, that's the best way to, you know, keep that, that homeowner, that customer engaged throughout the process when you can actually make eye contact with them and, and see what their reaction is and build that, you know, uh, personal connection with them. You know, there's things, you know, you may see a kid in the background and you can relate to that or, or you may see an animal or a pet, you know, and, and you can relate to those types of types of things outside of, you know, that just holding them accountable by, by being able to see um, them on there, you know, that you have their full attention. So um, those are a couple uh, uh, you know, tips to, to, as you transition to kind of a virtual selling um, and then invite your customers to participate. You know, this, this includes, you know, having active pauses where you're, uh, you know, say something or make a statement or ask a question and you actively pause and just listen, you know, make sure that that customer is, is receptive to what you're saying and that they're listening and that they're, they're answering you. Um, and then be prepared to, to facilitate the close, right? It's one thing to, uh, you know, uh, present a price to a homeowner um, and tell them, you know, why you're the best and why you're the greatest and what you're going to do for them and, and you know, uh, the process of the roof. But, it, but if you're not prepared to facilitate the close, uh, you can really create a bottleneck there and, and, and can lose people. So um, highly recommend, uh, you know, you get uh, set up with something like a DocuSign to where you can um, sign contracts electronically. And, and again, uh, you know, I guess uh, tooting my own horn, that's obviously a benefit uh, and a feature uh, of LEAP. So having those digital contracts and being able to facilitate that close from, from start to finish. Yeah, I really like that, Tom. You, um, you hit the nail on the head, and I think this is a great takeaway for the group. You know, If you ask yourself, how do I captivate my audience, me and my customer, and you really start to dive into that, I think – from my perspective, that is just going to be a facilitator in, you know, selling virtually. So that was a, I really liked how you positioned that. How do you captivate your audience? That's a great question. Um, for me, a personal example that um, we use regularly and I've seen used over and over again, and it's becoming more and more popular is 
when you're talking to customers, make sure you get their mobile number. Ask them, hey, you know what? I'd love to have your mobile number. It's been very difficult for us to communicate with people during this time. I wanna be timely with that. And if I have your mobile number, it would enable me to send you a quick text message. I know that's a lot easier on you. And if you position that right, boy, there's a number of times when you can do that with your customers and it's just gonna facilitate this, um, this approach. So uh, there's a tip for you. And Tom, what about um, sharing an, an example, maybe a personal example that you've experienced in this that uh, we can get started on today? Yeah, so, you know, I, and I got, I mentioned, you know, uh, my years of doing this and, and, and to be honest, like uh, I joke with people, they say, you know, if, if you don't notice the difference during this, uh, you know, pandemic, then, then you might've lived a, a lonely life. <laughs> you know, we half jokingly about that because I work from home. And so for me, you know, a, a lot of what I do um, you know, showing people um, leap and the platform and stuff—it's all done remotely. So, um, you know, I—I I was lucky enough to have like a Zoom set up, uh, you know, a workspace at home. Um, you know, uh, have my AirPods. I have a secondary set of, of headphones, microphones, um, and I think just having that set up and that equipment and being um, prepared uh, really is effective when when uh, you know making this transition to where everybody's kind of communicating and, and working remotely. All right, I like it. I like it. Okay, and let's jump to Haley here. Haley, how about you uh, with regard to this subject? For sure. So, um, you know, like you said before, just because we're moving away from the actual face to face selling, it doesn't mean that your bottom line has to suffer. Um, but you do have to find what works best for you and what works best for your customers. I saw someone in the chat mentioned, how do you approach the older generation that might not have, you know, the technology, um, you know, always have a plan B. So if your plan A is to rely solely on FaceTime, and this is something that I'm hearing a lot right now, um, make sure you have a plan B for that because not everyone is an iPhone user. So, um, you know, maybe you get Skype or Zoom. I use Zoom, we're using Zoom right now. It works really well and the homeowner doesn't have to purchase anything to join the meeting. Um, you know, so, you know, find a way that you can, in, you can engage with that customer virtually. Um, the next thing is use your resources. So, you know, you have a lot of tools at your disposal and being confident in yourself will help your, your customer be confident in you. Again, going back to confidence. So, you know, we've discussed today, Job Nimbus, Leap, Eagle View, um, you know, webinar tools. There are also webinars out there live and recorded that you can go watch and get ideas, but also talk to your fellow contractors, talk to your regional roofing associations. Um, if there's one thing I've learned about the roofing industry, it is a tight knit community. So use your personal connections to find what's working for other people in your market right now. Um, talk to your distributor reps, talk to your shingle manufacturer reps and your tech reps. We're all out there engaging with the community and hearing what's happening. Um, and we can help you find a solution to work for you. And then finally, just embrace the change. Um, if you can do this, you're gonna be in a much better situation than someone who's hesitant to change. I'm also going through the shift from outside to inside and it's stressful, it's hard. Virtual meetings can be really uncomfortable. Um, but I also know that if I let this impact my confidence, it's gonna impact my ability to succeed. So I've had to take a leap of faith and know that the tools that I have and the tools we've presented today, they're tried and true. And you know, you'll be successful during this uncertain time and even beyond as the world continues to shift to a more digital basis. <laughs> That is a great point right there. Um, you know, this, this digital change isn't going to go away. Exactly. <laughs> it's, fact, it is this, not. <laughs> this, this is probably going to, um, you know, facilitate a, a little bit of a faster change and yeah, take advantage of it. Get out mm -hmm. uh, ahead of the rest of the group if you can during this time and, and really uh, embrace it. As you said, that's, that's For sure. great advice. Um, okay, so let's see here what we got next. We've got questions and answers. So there's a couple things um, to touch base on. If you do have questions, use the Q&A tool or chat and we'll start to gather those and then, then review those. Um, just kind of recap a little bit, you know, we gave you a number of items that um, you can really cover today. So think about that. Think about some of the things that we shared, whether it's captivating your audience or building confidence within your team. 
um, some of the very simple te technology advantages that you can take advantage of today to get get a little bit of a head start. Let's help you build some momentum and, and really get off to the races and then, you know, maybe take on some bigger projects, but, you know, don't bite off more than you can chew. The, the, the reality is we can only do so much. Um, so let's focus on what we can accomplish uh, relatively quickly. That's going to impact the bottom line of our business. So um, that would be my first tip. Um, how about you, Tom? Uh, do, you, do you have a tip maybe to, to follow up on there? Yeah, I guess if it's all right, I, I, I see a question from Mike that I'd love to answer. Sure, go ahead. That's so, great. So Mike asked a great question. He said, you know, can you give an example overview of a virtual meeting or you know, the structure of a presentation? And uh, so, yeah, I'd like to just, you know, share what, what you know, I'm hearing. Um, again, a lot of people are using um, like a Zoom or Skype or one of these kind of video conferencing um, uh, channels. And uh, what they're doing is, you know, uh, once you connect, you're, you're introducing yourself to the homeowner getting acclimated, um, and then, you know, utilizing a service like Eagle View, you've got, you know, the measurements for that property already. Um, so, you, so then you can generate, uh, um, I should say first, you know, tell them about the company, your story, your value, right? Um, then, you know, put together that estimate, um, show them what that proposal looks like. Uh, you know, if they agree to that, you know, you move on to the contract stage. You can, uh, obviously, if there's, uh, if you have the ability and, and, and you do a leap to submit a credit application, you know, you can do all that right from within there. Um, and so that's how I would walk through that flow. And obviously it's not as quick, but, um, you know, building, building through that. And again, a lot of these like 10 step processes and 12 step processes work in the same way. Um, you're going to want to communicate everything uh, remotely. And so that includes, you know, sharing your screen or sharing your iPad. Um, and so those features are all available. You know, I use zoom, so I know, you know, they're available through zoom and I imagine they're available, you know, through WebEx and through a Skype. Um, but th that's kind of a, a rough template for, um, structuring a virtual meeting and again you want to present but then also pause and let get that engagement and feedback from your customer to make sure that they're with you and and as Rodney Webb would say you know closing those doors right through that walk of life so uh, you know just make sure that they're staying with you throughout that entire process yeah that's great I really appreciate that that's that's good insight um Haley um there was a question about uh, Eagle View and um, what all it can do, yep. uh, can it do items other than roofing, for example? Yeah, yeah, so Eagle View, um, we do, we are known for our roofing reports. We do also do siding reports as well. Our walls, our walls, quote unquote, premium reports do include the window and door area measurements. So if that's something that you guys are looking to quote or use, you can use an Eagle View walls report for those types of jobs. Uh, we also have the walls light, just so you know, that doesn't have the window and door cutout measurements. So make sure you're requesting the regular walls if you're looking for those measurements. Okay. All right. That's great. All right, let me take a, take a look here at the chat and see what we can grab. We got some Q&A questions coming up too. Let's see here. Um, okay, on online marketing, it seems like people are very reactive on projects, posts, and social distancing. Um, should we still sell on social media platforms or keep our social media more light, fun in the current climate with COVID-19? Great question. Um, Haley, do you have any insight on that? Yeah, actually. So I think that using social media right now to reach out to your customers is a great way to do it. Um, make sure that you're using it to promote the healthy steps you're taking, you know, that you're all of your um, all of your crew members are using hand sanitizer. They're, they're not going to interact with you personally. They're going to stay, you know, six feet apart from each other. Use it as a platform to tell your customers how you're being socially responsible while still being um, productive and, and getting the job done that they want done. Great, great. And I would say, um, you know, can, yes, definitely continue your social marketing. I think from my perspective, um, your marketing efforts on the social end really concentrate on the value that you can add to your, your, your customer base. Um, not necessarily, uh, has, it doesn't necessarily have to be directly correlated to your business. Perhaps it's uh, just helping facilitate your, your customer in one way, shape or form. And then 
for them when they do or if they do need your services. That would be my advice. How about you, Tom? Yeah, I just echo the same things. Yeah, I think it's, you know, right now everybody's, uh, you know, sitting at home and, and they're cooped up and they're, they're uh, getting cabin fever and, and people are on social media. So absolutely continue uh, you know, your marketing campaigns on social media. I think it's important to, um, I, I, you, have, you need to draw a fine line between being, you know, opportunistic and being uh, relevant and important and providing valuable information. So um, you certainly don't want to, um, you know, take advantage of the situation, but you do want to let your customers know that, that you're available um, should they need your service. And, you know, I actually heard a funny story last week. There was a, a, a company I was speaking with and they, their sales rep carried around their own chair. So they had their, their meetings outside in the yard. And so the, the sales rep would have their own folding, folding chairs. So I thought that was a, that was a really interesting and, and good idea. You know, that way they weren't, um, they weren't, uh, uh, you know, having the homeowner have to get a chair and inconveniencing them uh, you know, at the same time, maintaining those, those health and safety recommendations. Yeah, that's, that's, that's a good one. I like that. Um, Dan, in our chat room, uh, I love your, your comment. Focus on value, givers gain. That's, that's a very true statement. Thanks for sharing that. Um, another uh, question here was, um, would you have an example you could show of what it would be like selling virtually, what you would show them, meaning I think what would you show the customer uh, in that scenario? Um, how about Tom? You've, you, you've got, uh, I know some examples you've talked to, and then again, Haley, you do as well, but we'll, we'll start with Tom there. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I, I'd love to, to show you all. Unfortunately, I probably don't have the right time and setup today to do that. But um, absolutely, I mean, showing them, uh, you know, I, I can walk you uh, obviously through a full demo of LEAP, but, um, you know, showing them uh, the, their proposals, their contracts, the, again, the company stories, whether that's a video or a PDF, um, showing them the, the manufacturer brochures, shingles, um, all that material, um, but doing it all in a digital way where you're sharing your screen. And again, happy to, uh, you know, have that conversation down the road. Um, I don't know, uh, Christian, if you're providing contact info um, at the end of this or not, but um, you can always go to leaptodigital.com and schedule a demo there. Yeah, I think um, we will definitely have um, some contact information shared um, via chat and you can always reach us at jobnimbus.com. Uh, uh, or again, we'll have a link to schedule a demo. We'll, we'll be able to walk you through um, all, all of our integrations with um, both Leap and Eagle View and or other integrations, et cetera, to help facilitate any questions. Um, I think uh, that's one step. Sorry, I'm getting distracted by this, this chat. Um, we had another question from Dan. Um, how long of a pre presentation do you think would be ideal? In, in my personal opinion, the shorter, the better, the more focused you can be. I would try to keep your presentations to, you know, 15 to, to 30 minutes or less. Um, you know, those, those are going to be the top end. It really depends on the complexity of your business uh, and drive that. But r reality, if, uh, if your presentation normally takes, uh, you know, 45 minutes, you know, try to shave some time off of that and make it as succinct and accurate as possible. Um, let, let me uh, also share, I know Haley, you have a few things that you can share on um, presentation side and then we'll jump to the next uh, next question. Go ahead, Haley. Yeah, no worries. Um, I would just make sure that anything that you would normally show in the home, maybe it's a shingle brochure or um, a company brochure, anything that you would bring and physically show the homeowner, have a PDF version, have a digital version, show it during the, the virtual meeting, whether it's via um, you know, PowerPoint, or you just pull up the PDFs, and then have a kit that you're ready to send for post meeting for follow up. So, you know, have, make sure that you're able to still leave them with the information you would normally leave behind just digitally. Okay, and then we did have a, um, a quick follow up Haley on Eagle View. Uh, mm -hmm. Someone asked, uh, does does Eagle View do takeoffs on plans? Yes, so we do have an Eagle View um, blueprint report. So you just need to submit a blueprint PDF on our website. Um, there's an option when you go into order up by where you enter the address. There's a uh, little uh, click box there that says blueprint PDF. You go ahead and click there. You just need a top down roof drawing, uh, me reference measurement of more than 10 feet and the pitch values and we can get you a full roof takeoff. 
Okay, and then one more with mm -hmm. regard to some tech, tech uh, questions in Eagle View would yeah. be, um, how accurate is your siding measure? Um, is it just for siding or is it trim and soffits as, all, as well? Yep, so um, same accuracy as our normal premium reports, so you can be really confident in them. And then in terms of the soffit and trim, um, we don't currently measure the soffit um, or the trim, but we do just give you the basic measurements for the siding. So, you know, what you would actually need for the area. Okay, great, great. And someone, someone had asked before about the window and door cutouts, and I don't remember if I answered or not. So it, oh, okay. we do have those on the walls premium reports. Okay, great. And then someone asked about um, how do you how do you manage social distancing with our roofing crews, and that, that's a great great question. Um, you know, from my perspective, you know, a big part of that is your communication up front with your crew and the customer. Um, one with the customer, just letting them know and understand that, hey, look, we have a crew come out; they're going to be outside. There, we're going to encourage them not to interact with you. All our interaction should be occurring over the phone. If you have questions or you need to address the crew, here's our crew captain's phone number. You can call them and talk to them. Uh, you don't have to go outside and talk to them, et cetera. And then uh, acknowledging those same things with your crews. Hey, guys, you're, you're on the same crew. You know, work together, but work apart. Um, and, you know, really don't interact with the customer and they're not expecting that. We set that expectation with them. So I think those are just a few ways that you could address that. And then um, one of the other questions we had come up was, what is the best way to generate leads in this environment? And that's a great question. And in fact, we're going to address that uh, at a, a great deal of um, depth on our next webinar. So I really recommend that you register for that and um, get that, uh, get, attend that webinar because that'll, that'll help you with that in detail. Um, we are up on the, the turn uh, and timing of our webinar for today. Um, I'm sorry if we weren't able to get to your question or your, your chat question, et cetera, but we will certainly try to answer those uh, as best we can. Feel free to, again to schedule with us uh, a demonstration or register for the next webinar. We would love to see you there as well. We hope today was of extreme value for you and we would love any kind of feedback that you do have. Um, have a great day, everyone, and we will see you soon, hopefully on our next uh, webinar. Thanks again. This is Christian Picasso from Job Nimbus. I really appreciate the feedback from Haley at Eagle View and Tom at Leap and the support and um, ongoing uh, uh, partnership with our customers. Thanks again. We'll see you soon. That concludes our webinar today.